Before you watch my video, I advise you to go watch Bleach Full Story and support the original versions so you can have a better understanding of this video and how it all started. I love Bleach and I want to see it succeed in the future. If you want to talk about great anime fights that was remarkable, unexpected, and a roller coaster, you have to turn all your attention towards Ichigo vs Yukiura. The moment this fight was available to watch, the viewing ratings went straight through the roof. So many people were talking about this fight for so many years, comparing it to Naruto vs Sasuke and beyond. I would take you through all the moments and encounters between the two from the beginning to the end. I'm also going to be explaining Yukiyora's backstory that nobody knows about that is so freaking awesome. So let's embark on a new journey through Bleach's greatest fight. This is the battle when Ichigo defeated death. Compose yourself. What is it you're waiting for? Fire your Getsuga. Fire it. Show it to me and I will let you see the difference in our strengths. You will understand. The first encounter didn't start off tremendously epic and crazy, but memorable and subtle. It began in episode 113. Ichigo has been fighting an internal battle within himself, holding back the hollow version of him from taking over his mind and body. The hollow version told him when every day passed by, he gets closer and closer of taking over Ichigo's main body. This is great foreshadowing because by the time you finish this video, you will see everything come full circle. Ichigo young sister walks in his room and tells him that she knows that he's a soul reaper. Ichigo was surprised and shocked wondering how did she find out. Meanwhile in Soul Society we see the research and development team spot two powerful threats appear in East Korokara town. Ichigo felt the tremendous spiritual pressure of the enemy and quickly left towards East Korokara. The scene cuts to the location where the spiritual pressure was scanned and we see the first appearance of Yami and Yukiora. This reminds me of Vegeta and Nepa when the Saiyans arrived on planet Earth to find the person that eliminated Raditz. But back to the story. Chad and Orihime enters the battlefield to fight the enemy but Yami quickly dispatched Chad with a blow. Orihime looks back and sees Chad unconscious on the ground while bleeding from his arm. She leans over Chad and summons her ability to protect him from Yami dealing the final blow. Yami stood over Orihime despising her because of her actions and asked Yukiura should he spare her life. Yukiura looked at the woman and responded in a low tone saying, no she's useless and trash. Yami raised his right hand and tried to smash Orihime's face in, but Ichigo showed up right on time to protect his friends in danger. He instantly used his Bunkai to transform into his most powerful form, cutting off Yami's right arm in the blink of an eye. Yukiora used his observation skill to analyze Ichigo's strength in Bunkai and realized that Ichigo is strong but he can't pose a threat to Aizen. But suddenly, Ichigo's hollow connected to his mind telling him, if you let me take over right now, I can dispatch both of them. Ichigo grabs his face and continues to fight his inner demon from surfacing on the battlefield. However, this incident left Ichigo in a vulnerable state, so Yami kicked him in the chest, injuring Ichigo. Yurahara arrived on the battlefield and seen that Ichigo needed help, so he protected him and sent a blast towards Yami. But instantaneously, Yukiura deflected the blast away and struck Yami directly in his abdomen. Yukiura told Yami that he is an idiot because he's trying to fight Yurahara and Yoruichi, and his power level won't stand a chance against them. Then he proceeded to open up a portal to leave. But Yoruichi asked him, so you're just gonna run away? And Yukiura responds saying, you two are risking your lives to protect something that is already dead. And this situation lies in my favor. Bro, when I first heard this, I was like, this character must be worlds apart from the main cast of Bleach if he made a statement like that. And another thing about this moment, the Bleach community thought that this character was the highest rank of all Espada and he must be the leader of the group because he's so strong. So it made me wonder, what type of training would Ichigo go through just to try to defeat this juggernaut villain that stands before them? Now at this moment the Soul Reapers invaded Waco Mundo because Aizen kidnapped Orihime. 
And during the process of getting her back, a lot of espadas in their ranks have been revealed. For example, this is espada number 9, espada number 8, espada number 7, and espada number 6. So espada number 5 through 1 hasn't been revealed yet, so the mystery of the characters' ranks compels the viewers to watch every episode just to see the next person's rank. And in my head, I'm like, I know Yukiyori is number one or maybe number two because he's so dang powerful. But then we see Ichigo advancing through the massive castle to finally save Orihime. But he felt a great spiritual pressure that stopped him from running. And the next scene, we see the most powerful Espada standing over him at the top of the stairs looking down at Ichigo. Pause the video. I want you guys to understand what the director was conveying in this scene. This is high level stuff. The stairs are a representation of the spiritual pressure of both fighters. Yukiura is standing at the top of a 50 foot staircase implying that Ichigo and Yukiura's power level is literally worlds apart. Ichigo is tremendously trembling right now, thinking about their first encounter when Yukiura invaded the world of the living. Yukiura walks down the stairs slowly and told Ichigo that Rukia had died. Ichigo didn't believe Yukiura and tried to leave to go save Rukia. Yukiura asked him why would you leave without killing him? Ichigo responds saying, because you haven't hurt none of my friends. So Yukiura responded, what if I told you that I was the one that brought Orihime to Waco Mundo? And instantly Ichigo attacked him with his Zanpakuto out of pure anger. After Yukiura blocked his attack with one arm, Ichigo transformed into his Bankai hollow form to get serious. Ichigo hovered in the air and used his most famous technique to push Yukiura through the stone pillars. The crazy thing about all of this is that Yukiura is literally fighting with one arm while Ichigo is using his max strength. Incredible. However, when Ichigo used all his strength to do Gensugatetsu, the power of the blast forced Yukiura to use both hands to deflect the attack, but the blast still hit him. Ichigo thought he defeated Yukiura with a strike and began to let his guard down by talking to Nail. And suddenly, Yukiura rose from the ashes asking him, was that your best attack? If so, take this blast. And he launched a very powerful Cetera that broke the other side of the wall. Ichigo evaded the attack and tried to escape, but Yukiura is just too fast. He caught up with Ichigo and super kicked him back to the castle. Yukiura began walking towards Ichigo, and Ichigo tried to stab Yukiura in his heart, but the sword didn't penetrate his chest. Ichigo goes on to say that if you are the leader of the Espada, all I have to do is defeat you now, and he will win the battle. And seconds later, Yukiura grabs Ichigo's sword and rip off a portion of his jacket to show his rank, which is Espada number 4. Bro, I promise you, when I first saw this moment on screen, my mind was on cloud 9. This big reveal was so massive that it made more people want to watch these episodes even more. This was great writing at its peak from the writers of Bleach. This moment will forever, I mean forever ever, be remembered by the Bleach community to the end of time. Because this whole time we all thought that this dude was the leader based off the gap between Ichigo and Yukiura's power. And if he wasn't number one, he at least had to be number two. But no! This character is a spot in number four. Amazing. Yukiura looks at Ichigo and sees the fear in his eye and deals the final blow, striking Ichigo in the middle of his chest, ending the battle. Later that day, Grim Jiao brought Orihime to Ichigo's body incapacitated on the ground. He told her to heal Ichigo so he can fight him fair and square with no excuses. Orihime finished healing Ichigo and the battle between Grim Jiao began. I will not go into full battle in this video, but if you want me to cover this fight as well, let me know in the comments below. So after Ichigo defeated the animal Grim Jiao, stabbing him in the chest, a spotter number 5 arrived to the battlefield to fight Ichigo. Espada number 5 destroyed Ichigo, beating him down to the ground, taking order he made captive once again. Kenpachi knew that Ichigo needed help and obliterated Espada number 5 to help him escape. Ichigo searched for the location of Orihime, and once he arrived, Yukiura is present, holding Orihime captive. Ichigo and Yukiura stared at each other until someone made the first move. And now one of the greatest battles in anime history is about to begin. But real quick, if you made it this far, 
can you like the video and help my channel grow beyond imagination, which would be astonishing. Now back to this epic battle. Ichigo asked Yukiura, why did you pull out your sword before you engage into battle? Do you consider me as an equal? Yukiura responds, you're definitely worthy of destroying. They both started to attack each other endlessly using other techniques to try to take advantage, but it seems very equal. Yukiura lunged at Ichigo using his sword barrage technique, but Ichigo was evading every attack. Ichigo thinks to himself about their second encounter when Yukiura's speed and power was unmatched. Ichigo came to an epiphany that he has became a lot stronger, and now he can see the trajectory of Yukiura's attacks. Ichigo grabbed Yukiura's arm and finally struck him with his sword, cutting his chest open. Ichigo explains to him that the reason why he's able to cut him is because Yukiura became more human. This statement enraged Yukiura, causing him to strike the floor in half, showing resentment of human beings. You must be very excited to keep up with such low power level, then increase his speed and power level to attack Ichigo unexpectedly. However, Orihime protected Ichigo by using her support powers to create a gold shield. Yukiura stopped and asked Orihime, why did you save him from this attack but didn't save him from the first attack? He then says, I know why. But then Ichigo cuts him off before he can respond. For so many years, I wondered what he was going to say at that moment. But now, I believe he already said it. It's because she's human. And humans are irrational beings sometimes. But stay tuned because we will get into Yukiura's backstory and you will understand why he thinks the way he does. So Orihime gets captured from behind by the Tres Bestias. And Ichigo tried to save her but Yukiura stopped him immediately. Ichigo yells at Yukiura and told him to move and he responds, make me. Now watch this amazing part. Ichigo used his favorite attack to blind the vision of Yukiura, then sprinted towards Orihime but Yukiura predicted the unpredictable and summoned a Cetero to blast Ichigo away. This scene was hella freaking dope bro. I would love to see more things like this in anime because it gives the show more flavor. Using techniques and strategies in the fight brings the show to life. This moment was equivalent to a basketball player throwing a no-look pass to their teammate to score. But back to the story. Yami arrived from the ground and attacked the Thresh Bestias, throwing her to the ground. Orihime saw that she was tremendously injured and used her abilities to heal her. The woman was astonished that she helped her out even though she tried to take her life. Yami looked at Orihime and tried to eliminate her, but one of the members of the Thresh Bestias returned the favor and protected Orihime's life. This didn't last long because Yami is just too powerful, but Ishida the Quincy arrived to the battlefield attacking Yami. Ichigo seen that Ishida is fighting Yami and now he could fight Yukiura without any distractions. Yukiura asked Ichigo why hasn't he used his mask to fight at his highest power level. Ichigo puts on his mask and attacks Yukiura launching him through the wall. While falling out of the air, Yukiura uses Sero to distract Ichigo and flew right past him. Ichigo started to follow him to the edge of the sky until Yukiura opened up the ceiling of Waco Mundo. Yukiura stands on top of a pillar with the moon positioned behind him and says these words. There are two things that are forbidden under Los Noches. Number one is using a grand ray cetero. And number two, Espadas 1 through 4 cannot use their awakening because it would destroy Los Noches. He then uses his release form called Murcielago and developed a new appearance that reaches his powerful form. He wasted no time and instantaneously attacked Ichigo with his energy sword, creating a massive blast. Ichigo is overwhelmed even at his most powerful hollow state as we see his mask cracked. Ichigo stares at Yukiura with fear in his eyes, watching him throw an energy arrow at him. Once Ichigo dodged the first one, when he looked back at Yukiura, there was a second arrow already heading straight for him. This implies that Ichigo is completely outmatched and overwhelmed at this point. Yukiura tells Ichigo to fire his most powerful attack that gave many Espadas trouble because he wants to showcase the difference in power between the two. Once Ichigo fired his most powerful attack, it was completely harmless against Yukiura. Yukiura used his Cetero and obliterated Ichigo out of his hollow form. He continues to tarnish Ichigo and smashing him through the pillars. Yukiura grabs Ichigo by the throat and asks him why do you continue to fight when all hope is lost. Ichigo responds saying that he knew that he was tremendously stronger than him from the very very beginning. But he will never give up. Then he goes on to say that he will defeat Yukiura no matter what. 
Yukiura throws Ichigo to the ground and shows him true despair by transforming into his second release form that increases strength beyond comprehension. It's called Resurrection Segunda Etapa. Yukiura stated that he hasn't even shown Lord Eyes in this form and immediately attack Ichigo on a whole nother level. Ichigo thought he was coming from the front in appearance, but he instantly hit him from his right side. Amazing. Yukiura continues to toy with him using his speed and strength as a playground. Now listen to this, this is very important. He asks Ichigo why does he still fight when he knows he's dead lost. And then he goes on to say, if it is because this thing you call a heart, you will lose your life from stupidity. Orihime and Ishida finally arrive to the battleground and then sees Yukiura grabs Ichigo by the neck with his tail. Yukiura then blasted a hole directly through his chest as Orihime screams in agony. This was the day Ichigo died twice. She saved Ichigo from falling with her abilities, but Yukiura stopped her from going any further. Ishida attacked Yukiura to avert his attention towards him while Orihime heals Ichigo. While Ishida and Yukiura was fighting, the battle didn't last too long because Yukiura grabbed Ishida's left arm and broke it. Orihime saw the despair in Ishida's eyes and screamed Ichigo's name to the top of her lungs. And suddenly, Ichigo arises from the dead as Vasto Lord. This moment was so iconic in the story to see Ichigo turn into a complete monster. Another thing, this is the only time in Bleach that we see this form make an appearance so it makes this just more enjoyable. Yukiura tried to use Ecetero to attack Ichigo but he countered this with his own red version canceling out the blast. The Vasto Lord didn't waste no time and attacked Yukiura furiously cutting off his left arm. Yukiura looked at his left arm and used his most important ability which is regeneration. Yukiura summons another energy arrow and throws it at the Vasto Lord but this was easily dodged. But the impact of the blast is so massive that you can see the magnitude of this fight at its highest level. Ichigo used Sunido to appear behind Yukiura and struck him with his sword. Once Yukiura recovered, he tried to create another energy arrow, but Ichigo crushed the arrow and sliced his body to the ground. The Vasto Lord stepped on his face and used a red Cedro to cut his body in half. The Vasto Lord was getting ready to end Yukiura's life once and for good, but Ashida grabbed his wrist and said don't do it. And suddenly Ichigo threw his sword in Ashida's stomach because Ichigo has no consciousness right now. So the Vasto Lord tried to create a massive blast that would destroy everyone, but Yukiura regenerated and cut Ichigo's horn off. Ichigo fell to the ground and regained consciousness and seen the horror he had done by stabbing Ishida. Yukiura goes to Ishida and pulled the sword out of his body. He threw it towards Ichigo and told him let's finish this. But suddenly his right wing burst into dust. And at this moment he knew that his time was up. He looks at Ichigo and asks him to annihilate him, but Ichigo refuses. We then see Yukiura's backstory on how and why he became the person he was in the manga called Yukiura Unmasked. He was born in the bottom of a pit where no light was present for many years. His body pigmentation was white, but his comrade's appearance was black. He goes on to say that he felt nothing, which was the epitome of void. He could not eat or taste because he was born with no mouth. So instead of fighting the void of nothingness, he became one with it and in the result was nihilism, which is the rejection of all belief systems and morals of life. Because the individual believe it's all meaningless. This is why he hated to be compared to humans and resist having a heart. This is why in the last panel of the manga chapter, he stated that there is nothing in you and in me. But we return back to the present and Yukiura looked at Orihime and asked repeatedly, Are you scared? Are you scared of me? And she repeatedly responded, No, no, she's not afraid. She tries to grab his hand, but it quickly turned into dust. Yukiura came to an epiphany at the end and said these last words as he faded away. In this palm is a heart.